All right, everyone, so here's the 2010 Toyota Venza. This car is pretty much a crossover SUV and a wagon all mixed together, kind of in there. There's no real uh, category for this car, but again, uh, it's got a lot of room to it. So today I want to go over uh, some of the things to look for on this car if you were to purchase it used. Also, uh, talk about some of the reliability, safety, things like that. We'll go over the interior and also take a look at the motor and give it a drive. So, getting started here, obviously the first thing we're seeing is the exterior. First thing I would look at here is obviously the paint and also uh, the front part where generally accidents do occur. Looking at the lights as well as the fog lights down below, want to make sure that both ends, uh, both sides here, rather are matching up. Everything does look clear on both sides here. And then we'll look at the paint also on the hood. And we want to just make sure, you know, kind of take a reflection from one of the side panels and also down here on the front bumper and just kind of match everything up. Make sure that it looks all the same, the reflection's the same as you move that uh, looking uh, through each panel here. And of course, everything looks pretty solid. And then, of course, um, we'll go ahead and do that to the side panels here. We'll just kind of walk down the side. So, you know, looking at this bush here, we'll just follow that from panel to panel. So, as we see, we're getting the same exact reflection as we go down the car. And that's exactly what you want. Just taking that reflection, following it on down. As we can see, everything matches perfectly. So, that's a very good indicator that there's been no uh, accidents on this side of the vehicle. Again, just looking down there. One thing I do want to mention is that the car does have some big tires. Um, these are, uh, I believe these are 19s. So uh, yeah, they're 245, 55 R19. And these are very expensive to replace. For a set of four, you know, if you're going cheap, it costs you about 800 bucks. So that would probably be the most expensive repair or replacement on this vehicle. But again, we'll go over some of the other reliability looking into the motor. Um, and again, we're just looking at the back, looking at the paint, making sure everything's matching. Everything does look clear. Again, we're just looking to catch a reflection and just go from panel to panel as we're going around the car. Because, you know, if one part looks dull, one panel looks duller uh, than the other, or it's fading on one panel and not the others, that could definitely be a very good indicator uh, for accidents. And again, we can just do the same exact thing here on the other side of the vehicle. And we'll do that as we go ahead and look down. So just going ahead and following that sunlight, just take that from panel to panel. Again, we can see everything is matching up very well. Everything looks great. Again, we can follow that onto the hood again. And seeing that the paint is that exactly matching on either side of the car and of course it does so at this point uh, I would like to go ahead and take a look on the interior and explain some of the uh, uh, details about that okay so just going ahead and taking a look at the interior here got the Venza signs down there at the bottom of the doors And of course, with the driver's seat here, we do have power. Uh, we also have the lumbar support there. You've got cup holders for two drinks over here. A little space there. Automatic windows in front and rear. This has the push brake, so you just push it on and push it off for the brake. You got the Vinza floor mats. Very roomy car, of course, getting inside here. We have uh, the mirror controls here for the left and right. The traction control there for on and off. Got a little change drawer here with a lot of space in it. Of course, the automatic transmission. Some space here. And surprisingly, 
very comfortable sitting in the seats. They're cloth, very comfortable. Uh, I drove this actually for quite a while and very comfortable on the roads actually just looking here at the center console it does have quite a bit of space so you just pull this up and you can either pull it back uh, pull it forward really cool uh, we do have a lot of space more so than most vehicles I've seen in the center console and it's really cool because this part here it also you just press there and it slides back and then you have another front compartment here for more space Actually new for the 2010 and standard on this vehicle is the USB auxiliary port and iPod connectivity. So again, very cool features there. Love the room that it has for the cup holders here. A little space for papers, whatever else you may have there. It's got the curtain airbags up there in the front and the rear which we can see back there just right there on both sides take a look in the rear here of the car a lot of space here a lot of cup holders which is always nice some stains on the seat but a lot of room here and you do have the lights up there for on and off, which is always nice if you're driving at night. Really nice here, which I like about this car too, is that uh, the seat uh, in the back of the seats here. Uh, in most cars, they're uh, pretty cheap and they, you know, rip or they pull out and, and they're kind of loose after a while. This is really cool because it, it kind of folds out a little bit and it just goes right back in place. So no harm there on both sides. And of course you do have the automatic window controls on both sides here and then if we pull that up a little bit uh, we have the air conditioning here in the back and you got your controls for it on and off and let's go ahead and take a look at the trunk here lots of space really cool floor mats here actually look in here you got our tie downs there on the sides it's a little metal uh, and here actually if we pull this we do have uh, uh, on both sides pull these it's actually a 60 40 split for these rear seats so this you know will fold down this will fold down uh, giving you actually optimal space here and then also pulling this uh, here in the back we can actually see where that hooks up there on both sides and so if you do have any cargo or anything in the back when you have your uh, car locking your car up at night don't want anybody to see anything there that will actually cover anything here in the back which is another very cool feature of the Toyota Venza love it again lots of space so just to show you real quick I'll actually go ahead and pull this down here see that pops that seat forward there pull this one here that pulls that forward there and actually we could push those down we could remove the headrests it would give us a lot of space really really cool all right so uh let's go ahead and take a look at the motor now all right so just taking a look here into the motor great thing i love about this car it is a dual variable valve timing with intelligence uh this is the 2.7 liter four cylinder motor and it produces 182 horsepower and 182 foot-pounds of torque not a, uh, not that much uh, but it's definitely adequate very nice car uh, I'll show you that as we're driving the vehicle but what I do love about this is that the engine compartment is pretty large here and everything's pretty laid laid out just straightforward here of course we got our air intake box here um, we got uh, our, our manifolds here uh, for the engine, we got everything's just basically laid out. You got our radiator fluid over here, um, our washer fluid. We have our alternator down here. Uh, the engine mounts here on the side. Got the battery. Just looking around, the fuse relay, all that good stuff. Power steering fluid over there. Pretty basic motor, uh, but I really love the layout of this engine. 
Um, everything's pretty straightforward here. And of course, going over some of the reliability of this car, it is very reliable. Uh, it's rated very high in terms of reliability. Um, the value that you're getting out of this vehicle, it's, it's uh, you know, not comparable to many others. Uh, it's kind of in its own league here in terms of that. So it's great, it's Toyota quality, very cheap. Um, this thing has nearly 100,000 miles and has not had one problem. Just oil change, brakes, tires, that's it. Again, as I mentioned earlier, probably the most expensive thing is gonna be replacing the tires. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, this car is just straightforward, great car, super reliable. Um, so I wanna go ahead right now and just show you a quick drive of the vehicle. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this started up here. Uh, one thing I'm looking at is the dials, making sure nothing's jumping out of place, make sure it's idling all, uh, steady uh, also um, just listening to the sound of the car and how smoothly it starts up so we'll go ahead and fire it up right now perfect starts up no problems looking at that rpm gauge starts up normally goes down to idle which is about uh down at 800 there rotations per minute um and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started driving here just as i was looking there uh, one thing I do want to mention, however, before we get started, is that as looking up the reliability of this car, it is very well rated in terms of the front end crash, rear end, and side impact. Um, again, it has got a lot of safety in terms of the airbags, um, and it was rated really, really well, especially for being higher off the ground. So we're going to go ahead and drive it now. I'll talk a little bit about that as we're uh, driving down the road here. All right. First thing I notice about this car is how smooth and easy it is to touch the pedal and give it some gas here. You barely have to touch the pedal whatsoever. The brake, uh, automatically it feels really strong. All right, so getting it up barely just up to speed here. Um, the car drives extremely, extremely smooth. That is the, one of the first things I notice here. Great car. Um, just kind of feeling the handling here a little bit in terms of the steering. Steering is stiff, um, but at lower speeds, of course, you do have uh, you know more control in terms of, of turning the car a lot quicker than at higher speeds. At higher speeds, the car does stiffen up in the um, steering wheel so you don't oversteer too much. The car inside is definitely very quiet. I do love the fact that it's, I mean, a lot of the noise, you don't really hear much. You barely hear any road noise whatsoever. Okay, so we're still great. just driving down the road here. Um, the car's driving really great. I love the feel of the car. It drives really nice. Again, with the reliability, um, there's pretty much nearly no issues with this car. As I've been reviewing, uh, I did mention to you, uh, the car has just over, almost 100,000 miles actually, has had no problems whatsoever. Um, the gas mileage on this car, uh, looking actually right here at the dials here in the front, uh, we do see you got the temperature uh, gauge, you also have the time, and then you have the average miles per gallon, so about 25.6. And of course, for an SUV that weighs a couple thousand pounds, um, that is extremely good gas mileage. So um, they, they rate the gas mileage on this car at about 21 to 29 miles per gallon. Again, city and highway. That varies again with the type of driving that you're doing, where you're driving, how fast you're driving, that sort of thing. So uh, I think that's really great. Um, you know, this vehicle, when brand new uh, in 2010, it only cost $28,000 tax and license everything out the door so um, you know even at a hundred thousand miles this thing's had no problems in almost seven years now so that's uh, 
to me that's that's great that's quality of build that says a lot about the vehicle itself again it's just room room and more room in this car you can put almost anything in here you can put a huge surfboard you know a 10 foot surfboard uh definitely would fit in here no problem um and i love the room in this car it's great it drives great the gas mileage is great driving on the roads on highway speeds you pretty much don't hear any road noise it's just uh you could fall asleep almost it's so quiet um the engine's quiet it's just a great car um, it idles perfect i really love this car it's definitely a family oriented or daily driving car which it is a daily driver right now um just love this car altogether. It's a really, really good car. It's definitely something uh, to consider over it's some of its competitors. Kind of like I mentioned though, it is kind of in a class of its own since there's not much others like it. There's the Honda Accord crossover um, and there's a couple others, but it doesn't really match the quality and the standards of this car. Not in the terms of how much room's in it, uh, the gas mileage it gets, the reliability, um, and the looks are great. I love the looks on this car. So that's another thing. Um, you get a lot for your money uh, when you buy a car like this. Especially it has a really good one. sound system also. You do have your controls here on the steering wheel. For that, we can go ahead and turn the volume up here. Really cool. I like that. A lot of cars do have that standard. You have the Bluetooth here. Again, you can hang up the phone, dial here. Really nice. You can also turn up the volume for the uh for that bluetooth there when you're speaking to them so that's really cool uh but overall um actually just looking at everything when we're just kind of reviewing over everything looking at the car uh the price the gas mileage um the room that this thing has uh it's a really durable car obviously i think um that compared to a lot of other vehicles in a similar class to this car um i think this is is definitely something uh, to consider. So with that said, um, we're going to go ahead and end it here.